Ah, yes, spring. The time of year when nature wakes up from its deep slumber and is super turned on. Birds chirp with excitement, bears remove their fecal butt plugs, and bees start to buzz. Spring signals the beginning of mating season for many animals, and for most of these furry creatures, it's great. But for others, their own mating season signals the beginning to their sexy, sexy end. The male Antichinus is a tiny marsupial from Australia who primarily eats spiders, beetles, and has so much sex, it dies. Eleven months into their lives, these randy fellas enter a two-week mating period where they try to mate with as many females as they can and disintegrate in the process. To help sustain this mating season ambition, their bodies pump poisonous amounts of testosterone and cortisol into their veins. While this turns them into unstoppable sex machines, with some mating sessions lasting up to 14 hours, it also causes their bodies to slowly dissolve into a husk of their former selves. After about two weeks of literally constant mating, the cortisol levels in their bodies hit toxic levels. Patches of the antikinus hair begin to fall off, they start to bleed internally, and their immune system fails, exposing them to bacteria and gangrene. Yet they keep churning it. <coughs> 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 Antichinus males will continue trying to mate until they are too weak to chase females, or die from exhaustion. It is thought that they do this to give their sperm the greatest chance of success. Instead of half-assing it for two mating seasons, they full-ass it for one until they die. Male antichinus may sacrifice themselves to spread their genes, but their death is not nearly as gruesome as the female Stegodiphus lineitus spider. After mating, the SLS lays a bunch of eggs at the end of her web and encases them in thread. Once her spiderlings hatch, she releases them to the world, then vomits all over them. Not because she thinks they're gross, but because she has to feed their ravenous hunger. This vomit is made up of a hearty concoction of previous meals and her own guts. To keep these bundles of joy satiated, she will spend up to two weeks dissolving 40% of her own organs into food and then puking them all over her babies. Yet this sacrifice is still not enough for those hungry little love dumplings. These babies will eventually pierce their mother's abdomen and begin feasting on her insides. This will last for a few hours until only 5% of her body mass is left. During this horrific process, the mama's heart will continue beating for as long as possible so that her flesh can stay fresh for her kids. Cute! Like many insects in the animal kingdom, the male praying mantis is much smaller than his female counterpart. It can sometimes lead to difficult situations while mating, like death. When a lady mantis is ready for some lovin', she releases some pheromones to signal that she's DTF. If successful, a male mantis will saunter over and do his best to determine her sexiness to potential murderer ratio. This is because female praying mantis are notorious for biting off the heads of their lovers. If he decides the risk is worth it, he will jump onto her back and start a tippy tap dance, which basically means, can I mate with you? Please don't eat me. If he gets unlucky and she decides to bite his head off, no sweat. There is another tiny brain in his tail that will take control of his thunder carriage and finish the job, sometimes even more vigorously than before. The reason that these ladies do this is unclear. But on average, cannibalistic females can produce up to twice as many eggs as their more merciful counterparts. You do the math.